This is Mac OS Ken. Recapping the Watch OS 9 reveal, WWDC reactions from the financial front, and Talkin' Tim talks to time. It is Wednesday, the 8th of June, 2022. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Collide. Endpoint security powered by people. Learn more and try it for free at K-O-L-I-D-E collide.com slash macOSCan. This show is also sponsored by Notion, one workspace for your whole team. In business, you want to be able to move fast. Unless you work by yourself, though, speed can be a detriment if one of your people is speeding off on their own. Notion can help. Notion is an all-in-one team collaboration tool that combines note-taking, document sharing, wikis, project management, and much more into one space that is simple, powerful, and beautifully designed. With powerful integrations and seamless navigation, you will have everything you need in one spot so you can make speed your advantage while making sure that nobody's riding off on their own. For companies of all sizes, Notion provides one central and customizable workspace that can be tailored to fit any team and bring all teams together to get more done and move faster together. Learn more and get started for free at Notion.com slash macOSCan. That's Notion.com slash macOSCan to help you take the first step toward an organized, happier team today. N-O-T-I-O-N. That's Notion.com slash macOSCan. Right. Where were we? Oh, yeah. We were about to work our way through watchOS 9. Not unlike the focus on the lock screen during Monday's introduction of iOS 16, the starting point for watchOS 9 is the watch face. Or faces. Four new ones on the way for the new OS, including Lunar, depicting the relationship between the Gregorian calendar and the Lunar calendar, Playtime, a dynamic artistic endeavor created in collaboration with artist Joy Fulton, Metropolitan, a classic classy type-driven face, and Astronomy, a remastered face featuring a new star map and current cloud data. On the health and fitness side, the way workout metrics are displayed has been tweaked, as have some of the metrics for select activities. Stride length, ground contact time, and vertical oscillation are added options for running workouts. According to Apple's press release, runners can also race against old times on established routes, and they can set a distance and time they want to run, with Apple Watch guiding them to the proper pace to complete it. Kickboard detection has been added as a new stroke type for pool swim workouts, according to Apple. While Fitness Plus has always displayed workout metrics on the screen, watchOS 9 will also post guidance messages on the screen as well. Sounds like an interesting way to tailor a video workout to the specific needs of a specific individual. And Fitness Plus finally gets AirPlay support, shooting both the video and the on-screen metrics to compatible third-party TVs and devices. Sleep insights are going more in-depth, and while the ability of Apple Watch to alert somebody in AFib has been a thing for a while, WatchOS 9 will let users access their AFib history, providing deeper insights into their condition. They can also export a PDF of that info to share with medical professionals in their lives. Kind of amazing. And finally, Apple's press release says the new medications experience on Apple Watch and iPhone helps users manage and track their medications, vitamins, and supplements, allowing them to create a medications list, set up schedules and reminders, and view information on their medications in the Health app. And here in the States, the watch will be smart enough to know whether the new meds added have potentially critical interactions with meds already in the regimen. Tons of other updates for the tiniest of Apple's computers, though not for one of its oldest. 
For a couple of cycles now, folks have wondered why Apple kept selling Apple Watch Series 3 and when it would stop doing that. Expect that to happen soon. According to Apple's update announcement, watchOS 9 will be available this fall as a free software update for Apple Watch Series 4 or later, paired with an iPhone 8 or later, and iPhone SE, second generation or later, running iOS 16. In other words, Apple Watch Series 3 will not make it to watchOS 9. Kind of hard to imagine Apple selling a device that can't take the latest OS. Beta number one of watchOS 9 is out to developers now. It will be out to Apple's public testing program next month. Like the rest of Apple's operating systems, the consumer release is expected this fall. While Apple spared not a moment for tvOS 16 during Monday's WWDC event, the beta's been out for a couple of days now, and people have had a chance to poke through it. 9 to 5 Mac has a list of what's new for Apple's digital living room device. It includes compatibility with controllers for Nintendo Switch, public beta testing of HomePod software 16, HDR10 Plus support, some sort of rich video preview function for Apple Originals, support for the Matter smart home standard, improvements to Apple Fitness Plus, and a new remote control app. Not an exhaustive list, but good for a start. Beta number one of tvOS 16 is out to developers. It will be out to Apple's public testing program in July. And of course, the consumer release is expected this fall. News of a feature that I missed in Tuesday's iOS 16 recap. A piece from Engadget says version 16 will automatically install security fixes. Called Rapid Security Response, the piece says the feature lets Apple automatically apply security fixes to users' devices in between its standard software updates. If that sounds intrusive, don't worry. The piece says there is a new section coming to automatic updates called Install System and Data Files. When that is toggled on, users can get software fixes that aren't tied with full updates installed automatically. No restart or anything really required on the part of the user. One thing to note, as it stands now, that toggle is switched on by default. Assuming that that is the way for the general release, not just the beta, people who do not want the automatic updates will need to find the install system and data files toggle and toggle it off. On a services-heavy or hardware-heavy Apple event, financial analysts might move their price targets or even their ratings on Apple shares. Monday was not that kind of day. No changed ratings nor altered price targets that I saw. Still, a few analysts had some interesting reactions. It would not be correct to say that Morgan Stanley analyst Katie Huberty was disappointed in Monday's keynote. She did note a lack of meaningful mentions of protecting user privacy during the event. She also noted the lack of hints around Apple's AR or VR plans. Additionally, she expressed surprise around the move to M2 and the update of the 13-inch MacBook Pro. It's hard to imagine she hadn't heard the rumblings, yet checks by her team were unclear on timing of the M2 introduction, according to her note. That said, she seems to have liked a lot of what she heard on Monday. While AR was nowhere to be found, she thinks she's seen the outline of Apple Car... Apple Must quoted part of her note addressing Apple's CarPlay announcement. Quoting that bit, We believe this update is significant because it puts the Apple ecosystem at the center of the auto software experience in a way it hasn't before, becoming more like a car OS than just one available app on a center console display. We believe this is likely one part of Apple's path toward developing a car operating system and could be a small taste of what's possible with a potential Apple Car project. Meanwhile, a piece from Apple 3.0 had Huberty saying, The WWDC keynote once again brought out what we believe is the most compelling characteristic of the company, Apple's deep focus on in-house hardware and software innovation, 
combined with an increasing set of features that allows Apple's platform of products and services to function more uniformly, ultimately providing an unmatched and unreplicable user experience. Huberty has an overweight rating on Apple's shares. Her price target on the shares is $195. Wedbush analyst Daniel Ives seemed of two minds on the keynote, though both sides were pleased. While the highlight was the news around iOS 16 in his estimation, specifically Apple Pay Later, the biggest announcement of the day was unveiling two new MacBook models using Apple's new and innovative M2 chip, according to the analyst. He was actually on CNBC making that case midday Monday. Ives posted a clip of himself on CNBC to Twitter. There, he said, Apple has more control over its ecosystem. It's no longer just waiting for Intel to pick up the phone. They're beating Intel at their own game. It's a negative for Intel. It's another gut punch. Saying that M2 gives Apple more control over its ecosystem and, on the business side, better margins as well, the analyst added... That's another tale, and that's why this is so important. Remember the haters that say innovation is in the rearview mirror? Look at M2. They're beating chip companies at their own game. That is two big votes for innovation at Apple. Ives has an outperform rating on Apple's shares. His price target on the shares is 200 bucks. Evercore analyst Ahmed Darianani ran a list of top six takeaways from Monday's keynote. Pulling out three of those, Apple is adding live sports scores and standings to Apple News, which will effectively make the news app a competitor to popular sports scores apps like ESPN and CBS Sports. This likely won't get much attention, but we think it is meaningful, as news is one of the only platforms where Apple sells advertising space and we continue to think live sports is a sizable opportunity. Apple CarPlay remains an underappreciated platform, and the new changes signal greater integration with the real-time operating systems used by automakers. This will expand CarPlay to all the information displays in the vehicle, rather than just the infotainment screen. And finally, the Matter Smart Home Standard will be officially launched, enabling interoperability between Apple's smart devices and other major manufacturers, Google, Amazon, etc. Most of the rest of the list was computers and processors. We've talked about those. NetNet, wrote the analyst, the event announced features that should accelerate numerous growth vectors, including Apple Pay, Apple Sport, and Apple Car, while also building upon Apple's best-in-class operating systems and silicon. Darianani has an outperform rating on Apple's shares. His price target on the shares is 210 bucks. More news in a moment, but first a word from Collide. Endpoint security powered by people. A lot of times dealing with security issues can feel like being a six-year-old. Do what I say, because I said so. Collide has a better idea. Tell your team why they need to take the security steps that you need them to take. Not in a manual, not in a meeting, not in a lengthy email. Collide sends employees important, timely, and relevant security recommendations for their Linux, Mac, and Windows devices right inside Slack. I work for myself, and I check Slack all the time. This is going where your people are and bringing them along to make their work and your workplace more secure. It even works in bring-your-own-device environments. How? Find out with their 14-day free trial. Visit collide.com slash macOSCan to sign up today. That's K-O-L-I-D-E, collide.com slash macOSCan. Enter your email when prompted to receive your free Collide gift bundle after trial activation at K-O-L-I-D-E, collide.com slash macOSCan. Monday's keynote is 
so day before yesterday had it into at most talk of seeing Apple's mixed reality headset or even hearing much mention of augmented reality during the keynote had pretty much died down. It's possible, though, that TF International analyst Ming-Chi Kuo was playing it safe, waiting until the keynote had passed before putting firm dates on his expectations around Apple's anticipated accessory. This he did on Monday night in a couple of posts to Twitter. In the first, the analyst said, I believe Apple's AR, MR headset shipping date will postpone to the second quarter of 2023 versus the first quarter of market consensus because Shanghai lockdown interrupts the development. As expected, there were no clues for AR, MR headset at WWDC 22. Here is my prediction for Apple AR, MR headset schedule. That followed in a second Twitter post wherein he said, Engineering validation tests starting from the third quarter of 2022, media event on January 2023, delivery of development toolkit within two to four weeks after the event, starting pre-order second quarter 2023, hitting store shelves before WWDC 2023. Personally, I still like a September tease into an April launch, just like with Apple Watch. Of course, what I really like is having this stuff two years ago, so I might not be the best person to ask. News of some new productions for Apple TV+. Plus. iMore highlights a deadline report that says the Cupertino streamer has picked up the next film from Oscar-winning director Steve McQueen. Titled Blitz... The film will tell stories of Londoners during the Blitz of World War II. The 12 Years a Slave director will write, direct, and produce the picture. No word on casting, though filming is expected to begin later this year. Sticking with life in wartime, a piece from Variety says the cast for the Apple TV Plus series The New Look is fleshing out. Set in Nazi-occupied Paris during World War II, the piece says the series tells the story of when Coco Chanel's reign as the world's most famous fashion designer ends and Christian Dior rises, helping return spirit and life to the world with his groundbreaking, iconic brand. Juliette Binoche will play Chanel, Ben Mendelsohn will play Dior. Added recently to the mix are John Malkovich, Emily Mortimer, and Clay Spong. No word on when it will hit the stream. Put another big name on the call sheet for Mrs. American Pie. That's the series about an outsider trying to get in to Palm Beach High Society. Already in the cast were Kristen Wiig, Laura Dern, Allison Janney, Ricky Martin, and others. And now there's another. Apple Insider highlights a variety report that says Carol Burnett is in as a central character... According to the piece, Burnett will star as Norma, the most important person in Palm Beach society. Apple Studios has landed a sought-after Formula One racing feature, so says a press release from Apple TV+. Plus. The as-yet-untitled film comes with a crazy amount of star power, starting with lead actor Brad Pitt. He'll play a driver who comes out of retirement to compete alongside a rookie driver against the titans of the sport. Directing the film is Joseph Kaczynski, currently flying high on Top Gun Maverick. It'll be produced by Plan B Entertainment and Jerry Bruckheimer Films. Plan B did World War Z and an upcoming Apple TV Plus film with Pitt and George Clooney. Jerry Bruckheimer Films has produced a ton of stuff including the Pirates of the Caribbean films and Top Gun Maverick. Aside from Pitt, no word on casting for the film, no indications either on an anticipated release date. And wrapping up our TV talk, the Apple TV Plus series For All Mankind is headed to Mars, and you can go along for the ride. To get viewers revved, Apple has produced an inside look at the series' third season, Seasons 1 and 2 are available to stream now on Apple TV+. Plus. The third season of the alt-history sci-fi drama starts this Friday, the 10th of June. Between now and then, you can catch the inside look on YouTube. And finally today, 
Talking Tim's been talking again. A Twitter post from Time magazine had Apple CEO appearing yesterday at the Time 100 Summit. Topics hit included being a socially conscious company and hashtag these times in which we live. Whether a return to the office is necessary, his concerns about user privacy, his decision to come out publicly several years ago, innovation at Apple, and more. No news broken, but it was an interesting and enjoyable conversation to hear. You can catch that for yourself on Twitter. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by Notion, one workspace for your whole team. Learn more and get started for free at notion.com slash macOS Ken. This show is also sponsored by Collide, endpoint security powered by people. Learn more and try it for free at K-O-L-I-D-E, collide.com slash macOS Ken. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media, online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.